Hey, Shalom, Shalom, brothers. It's Brother Kamama Harher back at again. First thing first, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahat, Rakat, Wadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders I learned the truth from. Blessings to the Akimah Jehovah preaching his word, with whole heart to sincerity. Blessed to the 144,000, one third entirely. The first fruits kingdom of heaven, as David, that Biaf, that would die. And Shalom to brothers that are speaking in different tongues and looking at different nations. So Shalom to you, brothers. Uh, Shabbat Shalom too is the last one before we get into the next one. Um, this is this one, this this video right here, brothers. I want to get into you know the, the return of Yahweh Shai, very rightfully so. Um, you know, which is also a contrary to popular belief of Christianity and other religions that when Yahweh Shai returns, um, you know, um, it's going to be you know lollipops and rainbows like my other brothers be talking about or it's going to be peace and love and it's going to be god loves everybody it's going to be like a very awesome situation uh is what christianity will try to promote or other religions that try to refer to the bible which makes no sense because the bible says opposite of what they're portraying right um the second coming of yahweh shah is is going to be two things it's going to be a beautiful scenario for the elect the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Native Semiel Indians, who are the true e Hebrew Israelites of the Bible, uh, the, the, the descendants of today, that's who they'll be called today, which are the Hebrew Israelites. Um, but if you're if you're two thirds of our people, which are Israelites as well, but it's not going to be delivered, and you are a heathen, you're sadly mistaken on on what you believe on how it's going to look or be when Yahweh shall return. There's going to be there's going to be there's going to be some that's going to rejoice in his coming, and there's going to be some that's going to be well and be very scared and terrified as coming. It is not what the world portrays and um, and seems. And I'm going to bring some precepts to actually, um, you know, um, further elaborate that because that's what we do when we defend the gospel. We use precepts to further our point. First things first. Um, I just want I just want to go to um, uh, start off with. Um, Matthew, I believe 10, uh, Matthew 10 or 15, uh, it's either two. Let me start with 24 or 34. Uh, it's 34. It says, think, it says, uh, this is what he's saying out his own mouth. So this is where it gets really interesting because the red letters is what Yahweh Shah is speaking. And he's literally telling you out, your, out his own mouth what he's going to be doing and what type of manner he's going to be in when he comes back. It says, think not that I come to send peace on earth, right? I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at a variance against his father and his daughter, against her mother and the daughter-in-law, against her daughter-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household, right? So when the Lord come back, man, he's, he's really going to, um, really do some crazy damage, man. And he's going to really wreck house out here, along with the chariots uh, in general. Now, see, now, granted, now we also like to bring out, like I can bring out Matthew 24 and um, Matthew 24 and uh, 30 and 31. Now, this is the this is the opposite of what you know you don't want. So you you're going to have a wicked reward and you're going to have a, a righteous reward. So when Yahweh Shai returns, remember he's not coming to send peace. He's something he's coming to send a sword. He's coming to slaughter and do some great damage on this earth for all the wicked things that's been going down in this place, right? Especially in Babylon, so-called America. But see, what's the Lord going to do? Here's one of the jobs that the, the Yahweh Shai is going to do. It says Matthew 24 and, and 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And this is the return of him right? in this moment. So this is actually him speaking, but it's also the, the, the exact time frame in the near future that we're talking of today of what it's going to be like when he return again. It says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the, of the earth mourn. Right, right? And mourn is not a good thing. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. See? Yo, that's going to be like when when Yahweh Shai return, it's going to be it's going to be a sight to see, man. It's going to be some very very out of this world, um, unfathomable and unbelievable to the eye. It's going to be this the most amazing and most terrifying thing at the same time. And then it says in thirty one, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, 
and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now that's what you want to be on. If you are a so-called Negro, Latino, or Native Samuel Indian, when Yahweh returns, you want to be a part of the 32nd verse, flat out. That's what you want to do. Because when you go to Isaiah, um, Isaiah 20, 20, I believe it's 20, 26, 20 and 20, right? It says, come me, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. So when the Lord's indignation, which means righteous anger, you know, when his indignation is, is, is being placed upon on this earth, you want to be into the, in, into the chambers, which is the so-called chariots. I mean, which are the chariots, so-called UFOs. You want to be beamed up what they call in what they call a rapture or a salvation. You want to be a part of that to escape from this crazy stuff that when he returns, remember he says he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna not send peace but a sword. And the sword of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha is not gonna be pretty. It's going like I said, it's not like it's gonna be a gun or a knife or a missile. It's gonna be something all out of this world type situation. And that's actually literally at this point. It's not gonna be the good thing. You can go to 21. For behold, the Lord cometh, see? He cometh out of his place so he, to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. You see that? It's not going to be popping. So you better you, you want to be in the 20th verse rather than the 21st verse at this, in this point, at this point. Because that's going to be peace for the 20th verse. And that's for the elect of the nation of Israel. Again, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Samuel Indians. But the 21st verse is going to be two-thirds of our people in the, in the, in the, in the heathen. Especially when it comes to um, Babylon And the Lord says he's coming out of his place So he's going to come out of his place To come down to purposely draw And make problems That you really don't want to see You really don't want to see the wrath of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua The wrath of a large man is pretty You know, if you're a small person And it's a wrath of a big dude That can be very spooky But not a celestial being, bro That's just not going to be pretty at all You know what I'm saying? So let me go to um, um, uh, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 7. This is one of the ones I, I found them. Um, it, said, um, it says, uh, it says, and to, and, to, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. Talking about the elect. When the Lord Yahweh shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. See, we read that in Matthew 24 and 30, 31 too, right? But now he's coming with his mighty angels. But what are he going to do when he come back with his mighty angels? And flame and fire taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yahweh Shah. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord Yahweh Shah and from the glory of his power. See that? And when, he, and, and when he shall come to be glorified in the saints and to be admiring all of them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. See, so when he come back, he come back with vengeance. That's not peace and love. But then that makes sense because it did say he's not coming to send peace, but a sword. So if he's upset, he's mad about something. He's pissed off. He's pissed off. He's, he's come back with vengeance. So the, yes, the Lord does, the Lord does deal with revenge or avenge or revenge. Right, yo, and you gotta remember, it said the Lord come back with power and great glory, and He coming with an armada of angels. That's yo, that shit, yo, I'm telling you, man. And when the angel come out of nowhere, the angel going to either do two things: slaughter the shit out you, or 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 deliver or or, uh, or be sent to deliver you in the chariot to be to escape the slaughter they're coming to bring. Let me say that again. When, when the Lord, when the Lord Yahweh Shah sends his angels, when Yahweh sends Yahweh Shah and, and, and with, with his angels, these angels are going to come down and do two things. Either they're going, either they're going to slaughter the shit out you, or they're going to, or they're going, or they're going to contribute to beaming up the elect into the chariots so that way they can avoid the slaughter that they're coming to bring. I made that very clear as is really just either that way or this way. So Yahweh Shah is coming back to really do some crazy damage, man. And it's just not going to be pretty. Matter of fact, how about this? Let's go to, um, because um, 
when you go to like a Christianity church, I, I, I know I've heard this before. There are people desiring the day of the Lord, like, right? Like, it's like, it's considered to be like a really awesome situation, which, yeah, in a way, when it comes to the elect, it's going to be very, very awesome to the elect. But when it comes to, if you're not part of the elect, it's not going to be a pretty situation. You're going to regret wishing that he came back, right? So let's go to uh, Amos, uh, Amos 5, man, because... When you think about it, this shit is fucking scary as shit. Amos 5 and 18 starting. It says, it says, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it to you? Like, for, yeah, right. Like, right, like, real shit. Like, what do you really know about the day of the Lord? Like, what do you think is going to really go down for real when the, when the Lord returns the second time? Like, you know what I'm saying? That's what, it, that's what the scripture, scripture is, is pretty much explaining. Like, what do you really know? Like, like for real, for real, why are you desiring a day of the Lord for real? Like, why? It's like, what benefit is it to you for real, for real? And it says the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. So how, why are you desiring a day of the Lord when in reality, when the Lord comes back, he's come back for a sword and not peace. And the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. Or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Listen, oh my gosh. That that little comparison of how bad it's gonna be is not cool. First things first, you know, if you flee from a lion, you get away from a big ass lion, your lions are like, if you haven't seen one, I don't wanna assault brothers' intelligence, but let's just keep it a thousand. Let's just be very honest right now. Lions, a full-grown lion can get to about some crazy, what, four or five feet standing on, on all fours for real? Maybe four or some change? And then it's like, what, 500 and something pounds? You know how fucking heavy that is? Like, you can't, like, the average human can't even bench press 185. Well, maybe they could. But no, maybe not. 185 is not heavy, but it's light to a man like me. But 185 to a guy who don't work out. And just regular, it's pretty tough. So then you got to add another 300, 400 and 300 and some crazy pounds or whatever. So that's a lot of shit. That's a lot of pounds of a, on an animal. And then that shit fast in the motherfucker too. It just keeps just keep it real. Lions are like and run like what 40, 40 something miles per hour. The average human is, is like what 26, 27, maybe some shit like that. Like, you're not outrunning a lion, but if you get away, then you get met with a big ass bear. Oh my gosh. <laughs> then you escape a lion, which is very difficult to do. And then you get away from a big ass bear, which is extremely difficult to do. And then, next thing you know, when you escape that shit, you fuck around, find yourself into a big ass anaconda or some shit. Like, bro, the Lord is explaining that the day of the Lord is really fucked up. It's a really bad situation. And it's no escape is what it's trying to explain. And so if you're not on the right hand side of, of the of the situation, of the salvation aspect of it, of a real salvation, when the angel comes and beam you up and protect you, if you're not in that realm, oh my gosh, and then Yahweh Shah's back in this wrecked house, it's not good. 20, shall not, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. Listen, uh, yeah, this is not good. The return of Yahweh Shah is going to be spectacular and amazing. And also the most terrifying shit you're ever going to see in your life. <laughs> yeah. Yo, that's just called a spade a spade. Like, yo, the scriptures do a very good job of explaining when he come back what he's going to be doing. Hmm. Matter of fact, let's go to um, Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. Yo. Well, first things first. Let's do this. 66 and 15, Isaiah. It says, for behold... The Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. What? And it says, for by fire and by his sword, because what he tell you when he come back, he's not coming to send peace on earth. He's coming with a sword. What do you do with a sword? And this ain't about to be no regular sword. It's about to be some celestial, heavenly, like retarded reckless type shit like you know what i'm saying like who knows what that's gonna be like right 
And it says, for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. So it's telling you that when, the, when Yahweh Shah come back, well, the man who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ is going to come back and slay many people. Wow. <laughs> wow. Like, wow. Like, what? what is Christianity talking about? Where do they get the idea that Yahweh Shah, or who they ignorantly call Jesus Christ, I'll just say it maybe one more time, where is the idea that he's coming back with just such amazing glory and well not glory but amazing like peaceful and loving situation because it says it says people desire the lord and it, 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 they desire the day of the lord here they did they did it back then too not knowing that is going to be the most terrifying thing you have ever going to see it's crazy man it is the wildest shit in the world let's go to 63. It says, who is that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra that is that is glorious in his apparel, travelling within the greatness of his strength? Talking about Yahweh Shah. I, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thy apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in a wine fat? What? I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I would tread my tread I would tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. What? It says, For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeem is to come. Like how like like how how is people not reading this? I don't understand. I don't get. I, I, I'm, I'm like now that I'm like hipped and I'm like very, very well learned in the scriptures. Throughout the Yahweh Bashmi Shah, you know, I have an inkling and in obviously the eyes off to understand what's going on because I can actually I'm reading to I'm, re, I'm giving the precepts of the actual return of Yahweh Shah on what it actually really says in the scriptures, and it's not good. It's not good, man. It's only going to be good for the elect. That's it. Because you got to remember right here, look at this. Revelations, um, Revelations what, 1 and 7? It says, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, char chariots, or so-called UFOs, and every eye shall see him. Every eye, everybody going to see this bull coming. And they also who pierced him. Hmm, interesting. That would prove reincarnation. Because why would in the future the people who pierced him in the past which should be thousands of years dead, will see him when he comes. Make that make sense. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. So, be uh, wail, uh, wail is, a, is pretty much terrified or scared or in a very, very distressed situation when they see him. So, but Christianity would say, that when the Lord returns, that everybody gonna be happy as shit. Oh wow, this is very. Uh, it's not confusing because it's confusing when you actually find out the truth. But in, but in, it's very very well. Um, I'm persuaded otherwise. I'm no longer I'm no longer confused. I'm like like these people have no idea. And then even if you teach it, they ain't trying to hear that shit at all. And you can read it interesting you can read it though like when you read it what do you say about that like 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 when, when they when they're saying the opposite and then you read it what is their actual response we use a word called confounded that's the word you need to use whenever you bring out the true scriptures of what it says and i find it very interesting because people still want to try to buck up against it like it doesn't mean that it spiritually means that it's it's the most fun. It's like it's like it's like almost impressive how what's that word called? Um consonant dissonance or whatever it is. It's a word where they consonant dissonance where they just refuse to believe the opposite of what they actually know. It's incredible. It's almost impressive. It's almost impressive how dumb and delusional people really are or even ignorant to the knowledge or just rebel against what it is like as simple as one plus one is two and then somebody is saying no it's not 
And then you like, well, how was it not? And then they really don't really got a good explanation for it. But then, they, but then you explain it and go this and that, put them together. You get one and two. And then it's just like your proof is there. They're confounded. Hit you with a but, but, but and try to figure out another response to go around it again when they're already done. It's, yo, it's a, it's it's mind boggling, man. It's, it's crazy as shit, man. Uh, what's this? Another one. Um, I think Revelation is what? Uh, oh, my gosh. 19. Oh my goodness. Revelations 19. Now we can even start at 10 because this is all this is all uh prophecy uh, of the return of Yahabasha. It says, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahawasha. Worship Yahweh, for the testimony of Yahawasha is the spirit of prophecy. And what am I speaking right now in prophecy? This is the in the in the near future. Is the return of the Lord and Savior Himself, and I'm given the precepts to let people know that what they think or believe is how it's going to be when He return. It's so far from the truth. Eleven, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. Okay, let's just let's just slow this down. So Yahweh is going to return with lollipops and rainbows and love everybody. But it says he's going to the heavens going to open up and behold a white horse, which is which is a very symbolizing power coming in a chariot. And he said upon him was called faithful and true. So my Yahweh Shah. OK, now what's the one thing Yahweh Shah said in Matthew 10 and 34? Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I did not come to send peace. Or if he paraphrasing, I come, I come with a sword. Right. Okay, and then he says, and then he says, he was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. Hmm. Well, that shit makes sense over multiple scriptures on what it's saying that when he come back, he's coming to wreck house and to slaughter many. A sword, war, vengeance, almighty, wrath, ignition, like, oh my goodness. His eyes were a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of Yahweh. Hey, look, where do we, where, like, I'm, I'm, I'm killing Christianity right now. This is like, this is like raw, it's like a raw TV script or a movie script on what the movie going to be like. You can read the script before the movie come out. If the script says that the guy is going to go and kill the guy on 18th Street, I just made that up, or the ending is supposed to be a great bomb to blow up the world, wouldn't the movie show that at the end of the movie that the world blew up by a bomb or so? Like, why would it be something different? Like, who are you to change the script if the script isn't changed? Whatever's on the script goes into the movie, right? This is a this is the this right here is literally a script. It's literally, it's literally a movie script. If you want to look at it from a, a concept perspective, this is a movie script. What makes you think it's not going to go down like this? I mean, it just makes so much sense, right? It makes so much sense. We're looking at a true movie script, and this tells you what's going to happen when he come and how he's going to be moving. It gives you mindset. It gives you, it gives you mindset. It gives you intention. It gives you. What he's wearing, what he looked like, you know, his, his eyes. I mean, shit, this is pretty spot on. Sound like a movie script to me. Look, the art and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen and white and clean. And even get look and go out his mouth, go off a sharp sword. What with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress with the fierceness of wrath, the Almighty God. Like, come on, like. Where is peace and love with this shit? Man, this is crazy. He ain't talking about how he's gonna, you know, destroy people with it's it's just unbelievable. I'm I look, my job, brothers, was it was it was just to bring out this is like return of Yahweh Shah 101. If you brothers don't know these scriptures, then you can go ahead and look up yourself. And I could have bring brought out second address 13, but this is pretty much just like it. And I brought out many scriptures to prove that when Yahweh Shah comes back, he's coming back to deliver his elect. 
right? He's going, he's going to save his elect. Oh, yeah, he will be saving. Because remember, Isaiah 30, 63 said, mighty to save. He, so he's coming to save. And he's coming to save his people, the Israelites, the elect. The first fruits kingdom of heaven, the house of David, the Biafda would die, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Samuel Indians, those people, the ones written in the book, right? Everything else is going, it's going to catch wreck. Lord will I got to be a part of the other, the other, the salvation part, because it's not going to be pretty. And when Yahweh Shah come back, he is not going to be pretty. It's going to be in power and great glory. It probably do look pretty, but it's going to be very terrifying. It's not going to be real. It's not going to be. It's not going to be what you want. If you're not on the on the right hand side, it's not what you want. Yahweh Shah is going to be a problem, majorly. I brought this out as an edifying to you, brothers. Lord willing. I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahavah, Kavadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders. Learn the truth from Yahweh. He is to be, he exists. Bahashim in the name, and the only begotten Son, the Lord and Savior. Baha in the Holy Spirit, the Rakak Wadash. Uh, Shalom, Wamsi brothers out there speaking in different tongues, looking at different nations. Shalom, Wamsi brothers out there that's, um, that's doing his work with well, whole heart, truth, truth, and sincerity. And Shalom, Wamsi elect, the first fruits kingdom of heaven. Hazard David, the Biafta, Wadah. Shalom to you, brothers. Shalom.